Hello, how are you? Today we will talk about the transforaminal epidural pain procedure. This is the one of the first procedure that any pain physician learn and perform in their pain practice. And this is the one of the most common procedure that anyone can do during their lifetime. So, this is the most important procedure to understand, to learn and perform throughout your life so, and start with your pain practice. So, let us talk about one by one. So, indications for the transforaminal epidural pain procedure. Most common indication is the lumbar radicular pain because of the irritation or inflammation, the inflammation of the dorsal root ganglion because of the disc herniation, because of the spinal canal stenosis or any structure which is compressing over the nerve roots and giving the radicular pain. Second indication is the spinal canal stenosis. Other diagnostic indications are you want to diagnose at which level pain is coming before doing the uh, endoscopic discectomy or any kind of spine surgery. For lumbar transforaminal procedure, we need uh, investigation along with the blood test, we need x-ray and MRI. MRI I prescribe is the whole spine screening with lumbar detail. Uh, sometimes I prefer to do the hip screening also and x-ray, we do a flexion, extension and AP to rule out any instability in the lumbar spine. For the lumbar transforaminal epidural injection or lumbar transforaminal neuroplasty, we need to put the patient on the prone position. So, this is the head and side, this is the leg and side. On the leg side, we need this kind of bolster support on the head and side according to the patient's weight and the body. We need the one or two pillow and here is the lumbar support. We can put under the abdomen so that we can maintain the extension of the spine. So, we can open up the space more easily and put our needle. Let us understand the position of the CM during the procedure of the lumbar transforaminal neuroplasty. Before start the procedure, I will explain you without the patient. So, if you understand the radiological anatomy of the lumbar spine in one procedure, you can do all lumbar procedures very easily. So, understand the CM view in the AP, the end plate parallel, understand the spinous process in the midline oblique right or oblique left, opening the foramen or opening the facet joint injection, uh, facet joint. So, you can do the facet procedure, you can do transforaminal, you can do vertebroplasty, you can do lumbar sympathetic injection, everything very easily. Understand radiological anatomy in one procedure, in one patient very carefully, even if you are looking at the x-ray, look at the spinous process, look at the pedicle, look, look at the lamina look at the transverse process, look at the foramen. So, you can understand the radiological 3D anatomy for lumbar spine. So, so start with the lumbar epidural procedure, we need to the, put the CM in the AP position first. Once we are in the AP, then we have to adjust our spinous process in the midline. So, sometimes patient is tilted, sometimes our CM is not properly angled. We can adjust minor on the minor adjustment on the right or left side till right right mild read. Mild read will make the spinous process in the midline and we, we can do the procedures start from the here. Now we have to do oblique or the angle tilt. Once the CM in the AP position, we can have a single shoot here and we can do the caudal or cranial tilt to get the end plate, any end plate, inferior or superior end plate parallel to each other. Let us let us do the caudal tilt, yeah. For most procedure with the L45 or above the L45 level, we need to put the tilt caudally. Most of the time in L5 S1 level, we need to put the tilt cranially. So, this is the basic mechanism. Once we have the end plate parallel with each other, we can do oblique on the right or left side where we want to do the procedure. So, once we are the pant plate parallel, now if we want to do the procedure on the right side of the patients, we can do the, our tilt on the right side like this and open up the foramen. If we want to do the procedure on the left side, we can do the procedure on the uh, tilt uh, oblique tilt on the left side. So, once we are open the foramen, we can put the local there and we can inject or insert over the spinal needle and reach up to the uh, epidural foramen. So, so, we are ready for the lumbar transforaminal epidural procedure. To start with the epidural procedure, we need a one uh, sterile uh, 
tray or sterile uh, trolley where we have the local anesthesia injection, we have the contrast dye in the different size of syringe, we have one extra syringe and the spinal needle and something to paint and drape. Uh, in my practice, I put the local anesthesia in 5 cc and the contrast in the 3 cc. I can put the whatever the drug I want to inject like a steroid in the 5 cc again. So, I can differentiate where is the contrast and where is the local anesthesia and where is the uh, steroid drug. So, the importance of the extension tube also when we are putting the drug or the dye, you, uh, you do not move your uh, spinal needle. So, you have to attach the extension tube along the spinal needle. <coughs> In the spinal needle, if we can use the straight needle or we can just little bit bend the needle. So, if we bend the needle, we can re redirect our spinal needle towards the end point without withdrawing the needle or without just pushing your needle. So, in my practice, I usually bend the needles toward the hub. I, I do with the sterile gloves, some people do with the other things like the uh, needle care, but I usually do with the, my hand. This is the sterile, so, so ne no need to worry about the infection if you have the scrub up properly. So, you can see the angle I have put on the spinal needle. Some people do more angle, some people do little less angle. Uh, initially, I think you can have some angle according to your need, but little bit more angle is ok if you are doing the uh, bending of the spinal needle. So, let us go on the patient first. For lumbar transfer in the epidural procedure, we need to put the patient in the prone position with the pillow on the head lumbar support or the abdomen and the leg support if you can see we have to adjust the lumbar support according to the comfort of the patient. So, this patient is having the left side radicular pain. So, we will do the left side L45 uh, root block and we have done the painting uh, with the very sterile precaution. Sterile precaution is more important to reduce or uh, minimize any kind of complications like infection or other things. And this procedure is more important, so do the painting and draping as usually like we do in the surgery. Once we will check uh, AP view and spinous process should be in the midline. Once spinous process in the midline, we can do the tilt caudally or cranially to get the end plate parallel or squaring of the end plates. First we will do the square tilt caudally. If we are not getting our end plate parallel we will do the tilt caudally. Here we have got the squared one. Once we have squared the end plate, we can do tilt towards the left side in this case. So, we can open up the foramen. If foramen is not open much, we can do more tilt towards the left side or the pathological side to open the foramen. We can see the same images and the C arm view. Here we have opened the foramen, so we are putting our marker. Uh, still, we need something to more tilt towards the left side to open up the more foramen. <coughs> so, we can have the squatty dog view. Do minor adjustment if required before putting your local need, uh, needle. Once you get perfect view, you can start putting your marker and local. Put your marker under the foramen at the 6 o'clock of the pedicle, give the local anesthesia, wheel for the local anesthetic and <coughs> wait for 30 seconds. With this image, we can see the end plate is not squared one. So, we have tilt the CM on the cranial side and we got the perfectly square end plates. Here we can see uh, we are perfectly end square plate, our spinous process in the midline, but the foramen is not opened. So, we have to open the foramen by turning the CM toward the pathological side or the target side. This is the left in this case. Here we have turned our CM toward the left side and try to open the foramen. You can see the foramen is little bit open. The spinous process moves toward the opposite side. Foramen is not still much open. So, and we cannot see the squatty dog. 
so we will move the our sea arms more towards the left side here we have oblique our sea arms towards more on the left side so we can see perfectly squatty dog view the end plate are square the pedicle is there the foramen is open and we can see the perfect squatty dog view where we can do transforaminal procedures at the 6 o'clock of the pedicle so in this squatty dog view the nose of the dog is transverse process ear is the superior articular process eye is the pedicle and the front leg and the hind leg are the our inferior articular process so तो जैसे अर्जुन को मछली की आंख में इंटरेस्ट था ऐसे हमें भी पेडिकल में मतलब स्कॉटी डॉग की आई में इंटरेस्ट है और हम सिक्स ओ आई का जो है पेडिकल पोर्शन है वहाँ सिक्स ओ से हमारी एंट्री होगी सो आफ्टर गिविंग द लोकल एनेसिया वी विल पुट अवर स्पाइनल नीडल विल बैंड अवर स्पाइनल नीडल लिटल बिट सो इट विल बी ईजी फॉर द रीडिरेक्शन एंड विल पुट द नीडल अलॉन्ग विद द सी आम इमेजिस और पैरल टू द सी आम सो विल ट्राई टू पुट अवर स्पाइनल नीडल पैरल टू द सी आम बट हियर वी आर गेटिंग लिटल विथ क्रेनियल डिरेक्शन इन द टीप सो विल विड्रॉ एंड पुट अवर सी आम स्पाइनल नीडल इन द कॉडली अवर टारगेट इज द सिक्स ओ क्लॉक ऑफ द पेडिकल एंड विल ट्राई टू पुट अवर नीडल अलॉन्ग द सी आम इमेजिस so we may need little more adjustment sometimes or we can get sometimes very fast it's okay if you can wait redirect your needle spine and needle more times if required but wait for the end on view and the 6 o'clock of the pedicle first you touch your 6 o'clock of the pedicle and then you can do ap view from here so we'll check in the ap this is oblique we have checked in the ap shoots we are almost there we turn the image laterally so this is the uh, our needle position in the ap view we are almost perfect now we have to check our depth in the lateral view so basically cm ap view is for the direction and the lateral view is the depth so now we will turn our cm into the lateral view to check the depth of the needle we have to adjust our cm height or the height of the ot table to see the proper lateral position the process junction will check into the depth in the, the, the lateral position here we can save the image in this lateral image we can see the spinal needle which is posterior to the pedicle and we have to go inside the foramen we can insert our needle or we can push our needle laterally by withdrawing the spinal needle little bit and putting the tip cordially so we can see our needle little bit posteriorly and cranially so we'll withdraw the needle and redirect our spinal needle cordially we will feel the loss of resistance here i have just felt a loss of resistance and we will check the cm into the lateral view shoot please <coughs> so in this lateral image we can see that our spinal needle is inside the foramen and we can do ap view from here now we will check our needle position into the anteroposterior view uh, stand the cm in the ap view shoot in this uh, image we can see our needle into the foramen which is which is up to the middle border of the pedicle most probably we are into the foramen we have checked already into the lateral view so here we can inject our dye and we can check our dye spread in this image we can see that our needle it as the medial uh, pedicle border so we can insert over the dye little bit 
aspirate for the blood and inject. If you go little bit deep, sometimes you feel the paresthesia kind this. But if you feel the paresthesia, little bit withdraw the needle and inject your dye. If a patient felt some paresthesia into the leg, I have withdrawn the little bit needle, spinal needle and injecting my contrast. You can shoot if you want to do the live shoot at this moment or you can inject little bit of contrast like 0.25 ml or 0.5 ml. Remove your hand from the field and you can check the shoot. Here we have seen the perfect dye spread along the route. If you want you can little bit aspirate more, inject little bit more dye. In this image we can see that our dye spread is spreading along the nerve roots. The see I am in the AP view and the dye spread along the nerve roots. We can put little bit more dye to reconfirm or we can do one more shoot after few seconds to check whether it is going vascular or not. Sometimes what is happening you are putting the dye right now you can see the dye but after two seconds when you do mo one more shoot the dye is disappear because it slowly disappear into the vascular structure. So you can do one more shoot if it is not there uh, no vascular spreads you can do you can inject little bit more dye. So with this image we can see that we have injected little bit more contrast. So the contrast is spreading along the nerve roots and no vascular spread. From here we can do lateral. After the AP shoot we can change our uh, C arm position into the lateral view to see the dye spread and we will check again in the lateral view. In this image our dye spread is along the epidural space up to the L4 level and up to the L3, L4, L3 and L4 level. So this is the perfect spread in the lateral view also. So we have checked in the AP and the lateral view. So now we are ready to inject our drug. So we will inject our drug into the AP view. So we are ready with the drug. We remove the air and we will attach the extension tube along with the drug. We will aspirate again to check whether any kind of any vessels if no blood nothing there then we will inject our medicine very slowly. You can take the drug whatever you want we are not going into the too much theory here in this lecture but the, in my practice I use the Depometrol 40 milligram at the single level dilute with the local anesthetic and the saline. Sometimes you feel little bit of resistance so you can rotate your needle if required and aspirate intermittently and inject your drug. Once you are finished injecting the drug you can flush the extension tube with local anesthetic or saline. So 1 to 2 ml of the saline flush is ok. Now we can remove the our extension tube and put the stellate in the spinal needle and remove the spinal needle. We can do sterile dressing here and patient is ready to shift.